Amen. What a good God we serve. Somebody say, God is a good God. Yes, He is. Amen. I feel like singing a Christmas song. Y'all want to help me sing a Christmas song? Sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night. Come on, help me somebody. Christmas is only like six months away. Somebody help me. All is calm. All is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant so tender and mild. Come on, sleep. I said happy new year <laughs> the reality is that's a Christmas song but it means all year round because we need peace in this world and I remember a song says this world what can give this peace that I have the world can't give it and the world can't take it away amen we need the peace but you can't have peace without the Prince of peace amen and this Prince of Peace in John 14 says, I am going to prepare. Can I add a peaceful place for you? <laughs> Where there'll be no more wars, no more tragedies. Come on, somebody. Amen. No more sickness, no more ailments. Amen. And no more worrying about having to provide a passport for your travels. Do you really, when we get to heaven, we won't need any passport? We can just move to and fro. Amen. I'll be on the north side just so you know, okay? So you can come visit me anytime. You won't need a passport. Come and see me when you get to heaven. But the word I want to share with you is sleep in heavenly peace. The point is this, is that we all must sleep at some point. And I'm not talking about a, a five, six, seven, eight hour sleep like you had last night. My sleep sometimes is sectional. You all know what I mean by that, right? My wife is shaking her head. It's yesterday I went to bed about maybe, what, about 8 o'clock, right? And I figure I'll get a quick nap. And I got up like 11 o'clock. And I was wide awake. And she said to me, well, go finish your message. Go finish the, the slides. Go do whatever you got to do. And come back around 7 and get another nap. So I, I got up at 11, did some work, and I crawled back in at 4 a.m. And I got another three hours sleep. I feel good. I got my sectional sleep, but one day I want to sleep in heavenly peace. You got that one? I want to sleep to a point when I sleep and I wake up, I won't be waking up where I live. I'll be waking up where Jesus lives. I want to sleep in heavenly peace. And Jesus prepares us for that because the scriptures tell me, if you remember, we talked about this for the last few weeks, so let me bring back to your memory just a couple of thoughts, okay, because to sleep in the scriptures, right, there's, a, there's something about sleeping that means you are pretty well D-E-A-D, -E dead. You have the quicken who was dead in trespasses and sin, right? So sleep, we're going to read it very shortly, this sleep I'm talking about is when you pass away, when you die. And every one of you must sleep at some point. What do you mean we shall all sleep? We shall all sleep. I wonder if somebody's sleeping right now. Maybe somebody is sleeping right now. I think so. I think somebody is sleeping right now. Oh! I told you I had some funerals to do. I told you I had some funerals to do. Today, we're going to do a funeral. But the scriptures tell me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we shall not all sleep. Oh, but we shall be. 
So it says this in 1 Thessalonians chapters 4, verses 13 to 18. I will read it for you very shortly. But it says this. Now, how many of you want to die? I didn't think so. How many of you want to go to heaven? About 10 of you. Let's work on this. Maybe I can get you all saved before we're done today. Who wants to go to heaven? Okay, let's try this again. Who wants to die? Well, it does Who wants to go to heaven? Okay, good. Who wants to die? Yeah, we got a problem. We got a real problem. We got a real problem. Because you can't get to heaven unless you die. Okay, let's make it easier. Who wants to go to heaven? Okay, who wants to sleep? Yeah, I figured that much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the word sleep, rally, okay? The word sleep, koyamoto, koimo, sorry, koimo, the word sleep actually in the Greek original context means to die. Dead. And the word tells me in 1 Corinthians that, what? Jesus is waiting to wake up those who were dead in Christ first. Right? The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the yeah. hallelujah somebody so i'm going to speak to that person right now sir the rapture has come would you please rise <laughs> set him free he is free for whom the son of god has set free is free indeed amen come on are you free show me some excitement how does it feel to be dead and alive Strange? Yeah, you're alive and well. He is alive. He's a good sport, isn't he? He played the part really well, didn't he? Absolutely. Let me read for you 1 Thessalonians chapters 4, verses 13 to 18. And I'm going to run through quickly for you because we're going to pick up on this when we talk about the rapture. Because I want to talk about the rapture. Does anybody know where you can find a rapture in the Bible? What, you all think you're good scholars here or something? You all are telling the pastor? You can't find rapture in the Bible? You can't find the word rapture? So what's another word for rapture then? Caught up. Oh, we got some real scholars around here. I better be careful what I have to say from now on, man. I'm going to be on the test. So the word rapture is not found in the Bible, even though there is a Greek word that came from an original Latin word that does give you a hint. And there are some scripture verses that tells you that, right? But in this particular passage here, you will read, when I, see, when I show it to you, you'll read a hint of what it means because another word for rapture is caught up. Would you find caught up in the Bible? Of course you'll find caught up in the Bible, but that's, again, that's an English translation from the original Greek word. Anyone knows the Greek word? Rapio. Rapio is a good word. Rapio is found where? In Revelation chapters 4. We'll get there in the very moment, right? But the actual word is haptazo. Okay? Haptazo is the word that means caught up. But we also associate the word in the Middle, even, Middle Eastern time with the Reformation. We start using the word rapture. It means what? It means uh, taken away. Was Jesus raptured? Ah, was Jesus raptured? Okay, let me make it simple to you. Was Jesus taken away? Yeah. Oh, he was caught up. <laughs> and in the same way, this Jesus, who you see is leaving and being caught up, so shall it be when he returns, you too shall be caught up. This same Jesus in Acts chapter 2, what did they say? Acts chapter 1. The angels came and told the disciples, they were watching on his, on his ascension. And they says, why standing ye here and gazing? This same Jesus who is caught up or is taken away or is leaving the earth in the clouds, he shall so come back in the like manner in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the rapture is a reality for all of us. We just experience a hint of a dramatization of what is to come for we who were dead in Christ first. Let's read verse 13. Brothers and sisters, Paul is saying, we don't want you to be ignorant. Why would he say that? Because we are still ignorant today. Guessing when will this take place? And his disciples and all those around him in the first century, they were ignorant to what Christ said in Matthew 24, that you shall see the signs of my return. 
And that ignorance is translated today where ministers and preachers are still trying to give us a translation to what the word means in Matthew 24. And I tell you this much, no man knows. No woman knows. The Pope doesn't know. The priest doesn't know. And the pastor doesn't know. But our ignorance continues. It says about those who fall asleep. The mystery of sleeping. Or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep. The word bring is another hint of the word Hapazo, or the caught up, or the lifting up of, right? And he says in verse 15, according to the Lord's own word. Ah, I got to take that one seriously. Paul is writing inspired by God. But he says here in verse 15, according to the Lord's own word. We tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Or who have what? Koyamako. Who have died. He says here, For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and I wish I had a trumpet, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Jump to Revelation chapters 12 quickly for me, somebody. Revelation chapters 12, verses 5. I'm not going to confuse you with the antics that are there, but just look at verse 5, okay? Verse 5 says this. This is Revelation chapters 12, right? She gave birth to a son, a male child. Who is the she? Israel. Remember the seed of the woman, right? In Genesis chapter 3. When God cursed the woman, when God cursed Eve, he said the seed of the woman. So she, in Revelation now, chapters 12, verse 5, she gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. Now, the King James will give you a different reading, but I'm in the NIV. Who's got the King James? It's on the screen. Oh, right there. The King James says, and her child was... Caught up unto God and to his throne. See? Haptazo is the word right there. Even Jesus was caught up. A foreshadow of what will happen to all of us. My NIV says, and he, he, the child, was snatched up to God and to his throne. We'll pick up on this in a few weeks, probably when we get to the part of Revelations. But the point of the matter is, is that Jesus is caught up and so are we as well. So this rapture is a reality for all of us. Would you agree? Hapazo is the word for rapture. And you'll see it there across the scriptures. All right? And if you check this out, the dead in Christ will rise first. Do you know the word first in this case? The word is anistemi. Anistemi is rise up out of the dead. No, they couldn't find a word to explain that when they were translating it. So they used the word, the dead shall rise first. Now, who would like to go to heaven first? <laughs> Nancy, you're the only one who wants to die. If you want to go to heaven first, you've got to die first. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. So all of us is going to get caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now, this rapture I'm talking about then, that John in the book of Revelations gives us a premonition of what it looks like. We have to see when does this rapture take place. We've talked about it. You've got to go back and listen to my messages. In fact, listen to last Sunday's message. Pretty powerful stuff, okay? And if you've known history for your own time of, of understanding, the rapture takes place somewhere around the tribulation. Right? Now, who does not know what the tribulation is? Good. Okay? Who can tell me what did Daniel say about the tribulation? 
any scholars. Going once, going twice. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. He talks about what? That takes place when? In the middle of the tribulation. Right? So the first three and a half years ushers in God's judgment on the earth. Right? Do we know when that is? Absolutely not. If you go to Matthew 24, I think it's verse 3, and then later on in verse 36, you will see Jesus says, No man knows the day or the hour of my return. So, so my point is this, is that you can either be pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. Let me elaborate for you, okay? Pre-trip means that Daniel's prophetic word of that 70 weeks times 7 is 490 years. 483 years is complete when the anointed one was cut off, and that's Jesus, right? If you count from that prophetic word of Daniel to when Christ showed up in, the, in AD, you would notice it's 483 years roughly. Seven years is pending. That's called the tribulation. In that period of time, the word is telling me that we will be, what? The dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Now, what's going to happen? Is either, we, if we don't know when it is, then we can assume it could be at the beginning of the seven-year period. All I know is this. Jesus echoes what Daniel says in Matthew 24, verse 15. All I know is the insight from Daniel and the foresight from Jesus gives me the oversight in Revelations. And the oversight makes it very clear that something is going to happen uniquely when the middle is when the Antichrist is revealed. I'm only repeating what you learned last week. All right? Now, the point is this. Pre-trip means that you will be caught up to meet him in the air in the rapture, when the tribulation starts. Are we in the tribulation? Well, last week, we talked about the abominations. This abomination of all types been going on. The single abomination is when the Antichrist is revealed. But what about the abomination of all the sins of this world that we are all observing in our own lives, in the city's life? The sins of all that's going on with corruption and violence and hate, all the corruptions of, 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 of people racially dividing each other, of wars, of rumors of wars, of famines and earthquakes. And what's happening is this. It will all take place. It's unfolding before our very eyes. And it's either we are living it right now or we're going to be taken away before it gets really worse and get really bad. Now, the next point is this. If that's the case, I am much more prone to believe, based on the emphatic word that God has revealed to us recently, that the middle of the tribulation is much more of a countdown time. Right? We can start counting when the Antichrist is revealed. Has he been revealed? Not yet. You agree? Has anyone seen him? No? Is he in America? You don't know? Is he in Canada? Is he in Brazil? Is he in Chile? He's got to be in Nigeria. <laughs> Maybe not. He's not revealed yet. But when the Antichrist is revealed, I can promise you this much. The church will not be here. Who's the church? First Baptist? First Baptist? Some of us? Let me not go there, Cassie. Because I want to make sure I get in too. Let's continue on. Post-tribulation, forget about it. Because post-tribulation goes against the grain of all the scriptures because we will not be here when the Antichrist is revealed. Would you agree with that? So many of you are confused because you hear about 666, the mark of the beast. It ain't going to happen until the Antichrist is revealed. Apply your common sense to scripture. Right? There is hints of it right now because most of you have smart everything. Right? They're starting to plant chips so they can identify you and recognize you. By the way, you can't hide in the world today. If even your cell phone is off, they can track you. Right? So they know where you are. Okay? But the point of the matter is, there is no control yet. The con global control to influence all of the economy and then to bring a peace treaty to Israel is going to come when this individual called the Antichrist is revealed and he starts to put in his abomination of desolation, including global control of the world. And you have to be smart to understand what that means. But however, when he is revealed... 
if you were left behind, you can start counting. Because now Jesus is going to show up for a second time. By the way, the rapture is not the second coming. We'll talk about that next week. The rapture is not the second coming. The rapture is to take the church out of the world so God can pour his judgment upon the earth and bring Israel back into submission to his order of what he ordained to be the people of God that he called. And they're still looking for Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. And when the Antichrist is revealed, he's going to pretend he's God, this deceiver, and that's when Israel is going to get smacked behind the head and wake up and realize that it was Jesus when he shows up three and a half years later in the Armageddon. He will show to them that he is the Savior who they crucified. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So ongoing predictions, but don't ignore the abominations, right? You would remember things like Left Behind series. Remember the Left Behind series, right, with Tim LaHaye and uh, Jerry Jenkins? All those series where we were scaring people to death. And we use all kind of scare tactics to warn people that the rapture is taking place. Get scared. Oh, you're going to be left behind. Oh, the rapture is going to take place any time now. And I want to suggest to you, the rapture for me is a glorious time. It's not a scary time. If you are a follower of Christ and a believer in Christ, you should rejoice that your redemption is drawing nigh. Amen? You should not be scared of no rapture. If you are not a believer, you better be scared. Because I'll tell you this much, you can afford, you might be able to live without Christ, but you can't afford to die without him. And the non-believers need to recognize in this midnight hour, it is eminent and sudden. So let's go to the next slide. What we know about the rapture, and I want to read you a couple of passages further just to enlighten you a bit more. Let me read you 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 52. It says this, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will, what? Be changed in a moment, in the flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. That's a cross-reference to what I just read for you in First. Thessalonians chapters 4, you will see a cross-reference in 1 first, uh, first Corinthians 15, 51. And let's read you what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapters 5. It says this, 5 verse 1. Now, brothers, about the times and the dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, Destruction will come on them suddenly as a labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape it. Somebody say, have mercy, Lord. And it was Jesus in Matthew 24 on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came privately and said, tell us when shall these things be? And I want to suggest to you, he's telling us to this very day. This display here is preparation for what that means. Because we are going to partake of these emblems today as a foreshadow of what Jesus says. Because here are the points. He's coming back to do the marriage supper of the Lamb. Before he was crucified, he did a supper. Did you get that? He was performing a supper for his disciples when he introduced the idea of preparation for his crucifixion. When we join him physically again, in person, there's going to be another supper. But this time is going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. Somebody say amen. And what you will need is not the blood. What you will need is not his broken body. Are you listening to me now? See, right now, we need the blood to do what? Empower us. The blood will never lose. We get the power in the blood, right? The broken body is healing for our bodies as well. Preparation for anticipation to follow him as Savior. When we get to heaven, we won't need the blood, and we won't need the body. Does anybody know what we'll need? We'll need his glory you are going to receive 
the same glory that Jesus had at his resurrection, you are going to receive the same glory. Read John chapter 6, 17, and you will see. Father, I pray that you will give them the glory that you've given to me. Do you know what that means? In this physical world, we are strapped to earth and it's evil, but when we are resurrected in the rapture and we are given a new body, you are going to have the glory of Christ on you. That's why in heaven you will need a sunshine because the glory of God is going to be your sunshine. And that's why I tease you, it's not the S-U-N, it's the S-O-N, sunshine. Look at the points. True believers will be raptured. I said true believers, not fake, not pretense, not religious. How many of you are good Baptists here? Anybody's a good Baptist? Look, you're all afraid to put your hand up now. You can put your hand up, I'm, I'm a good Baptist. Are you a good Baptist? Put your hand up. Are you a good Baptist? Are you a good Pentecostal? My hands are still up. Are you a good Methodist? My hands are still up. Are you a good Protestant? My hands are still up. Are you a good Catholic? My hands are still up. You know why? Because it's irrelevant. But how many believe in Jesus? The one church, the Ecclesia, that he said, I will build and the gates of hell. In that one church, you are going to have the glory of God. Amen? And he's going to hide every, every scar that you'd have gone through in your lifetime. He would cover everything up with your glory. When you see me in heaven, you'll say, is that Pastor Wendell? You go, he looks so handsome now. What's that halo over his head? What? Pastor Gibbs? And I'd be looking at you, what? Is that Vivian? Girl, you're looking so good. It must be the glory of God shining on you. Amen. And Conroy, man, you can play that keyboard now in hell. Oh, he said, he said he's going to have hair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Conroy, is that what you're praying for when you get to heaven? Oh, my. <laughs> Let me wrap it up and do all communion time for you as well, okay? But the word is very clear. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you in verse 4 and verse 36. No one knows what they or hour cross reference to what it says in Thessalonians 5 no one knows the day or the hour not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father I want to suggest to you that you've got to look up for your redemption is drawing nigh more to come trust God in this moment right now all right and I want to leave you okay with this communion this is a preparation of the marriage supper of the Lamb. Eat as often as you do. When? Only when you're on earth. We will not be taking communion anymore in heaven. Right? So let's partake together. Elders, you come. Deacons, you come. Let's partake now because as often as we do in preparation for that marriage supper of the Lamb. I had much more for you in Revelations. We'll get there. In fact, Revelation chapter 4, verses 1. I was going to reference that for you just so, you just so you can see it. Right? Sorry? And this I behold, this, and this I look, this is John, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I heard first speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up hither. Come up hither. Caught up. John was caught up in his first vision in, John, in Revelation chapters 4 to be continued, to see when John was caught up, when will we be caught up? Amen?